yes vectors and scalars lesson 2 but as i told you yesterday whatever was remaining hmm, we will in the first lesson we'll cover here but in this lesson sum sum of two vectors okay that's the main idea and uh, sum of two vectors will be found from law of triangle or law of parallelogram and cosine rule these three only for summing up vectors but before going to that yesterday we had a few uh, things uh, things a uh, few headings uncovered right we'll go to that what was it equality of vectors right let me finish up that equality of two vectors and i when you are not speaking to me you are doing writing there and as well listening to me okay you need to have a comfortable place there that's very important you cannot be listening to the lesson lying on your bed so you should be near a table see two vectors are said to be equal hmm? if they have one same magnitude and direction two If they have one, I'll put here. If they have same magnitude and direction two, if they represent the same physical quantity, this is what we say the equality of vectors is about. What does it mean? I'll go to more details. Say this is vector A. Every time you should have a solid arrowhead. This is vector A. This is vector B, for example. Hmm? If they have same length and same direction, I've, I've showed them parallel to each other. That's what you mean by the same direction. This theta is same. All right. So then you can say vector A equals vector B. But as far as maths goes, this is enough over. That means if these vectors were representing simply a point in the space, how do they represent a point in the space? If I draw x axis, y axis like that. This will be x comma y the point which will come back later while discussing the position vector but even in geometrically speaking if you don't say what is a representing and what is b representing you can simply write a equals b but for example if a was a force vector and b was a velocity vector you couldn't have told force is equal to velocity isn't it that will be wrong therefore in our physics remember when you say two vectors are equal you also mean to say that they are representing the same physical quantity, all right? So in physics, when you say two vectors are equal, you mean to say they represent the same physical quantity. same physical quantity right tell me what i was trying to tell you was this say a force vector of 100 newtons making an angle 30 degrees with the positive x-axis or easterly direction may be represented by 
10 centimeters length of a vector each centimeter showing 10 newtons similarly a velocity vector with some say for example 20 meters per second may also be represented by 10 centimeters length of a vector with each one centimeter showing how much two meters per second you follow so this is velocity vector this is force vector geometrically if you look at them they have same length and same angle they are making with the positive x-axis or easterly direction just because of that you cannot say that force velocity is equal to velocity vector isn't it that's not correct so that's why this statement becomes very important for us all right children can you continue or do you have any question one minute one yeah. minute I told you already, as I'm writing and talking, you need to keep listening and keep writing. These are the headings which we did not cover yesterday in the first lesson. So we are covering it now and going to the second lesson, sum of two vectors. So when you are finished with that, tell me. I hope you understood. In the pure mathematical sense, it is tempting to say that these two vectors are equal, but they are not really because one is velocity, the other is force. Do you follow? Is that yes. point clear to you, children? Then, sir. Right. So. Then, sir. Right. And we continue. From here comes an idea, parallel transport of a vector. That is parallel transport of a vector. See, you can move a vector parallel to itself in any sense, sense in the sense up, down, right left that way without any change in its nature hmm? we can move a vector parallel to itself in any sense that is up or down or left or right it is without changing the nature of the vector or the nature doesn't change we mean to say This is very important for constructing geometrical figures. So that we could use the geometrical laws to do something. What does it mean? If I have a vector like this, whether you show it here or here, doesn't matter. I can show vector A there. I can move towards right like this, but parallel to itself. It will be still A only. Where you show it in the paper doesn't matter. Or as I told you, shifting the coordinate system doesn't matter. You can also show it like this downwards. You can also show it somewhere there upwards. You can move it this way, this way, this way, and this way also. 
left right down up like that you can move in any sense we use the word sense there hmm? without any danger to the vector huh? just now we told no two vectors parallel to each other are same vector so whether i say a is here if i say this is b a will be equal to b only right huh? if i said we moved a here it became b but since they are parallel and having the same magnitude and direction a will be equal to b isn't it so therefore we can say that the vector can be moved this way that way whatever way we want it but why this very important for constructing geometrical figures like to construct a triangle to construct a parallelogram for example we'll be using this idea of shifting the vectors that's one thing and second thing is when we show forces in future for example we might show it here there doesn't matter if there's a block like this when i said i am applying a force here physically like tying a rope and pulling it if i put this vector this side also the meaning doesn't change it is equivalent to moving this force here do you follow so for the mathematics yes, sake for the mathematics sake just moving a vector parallel itself is okay all right so if i have written down this i'll continue so equality of vectors and parallel transport of vector we talked and of course you're always welcome any time when i finish a particular uh point here you could immediately say you are doubt so shall i continue children yes abhi now are you there in the meeting yes sir okay are you writing yes sir will you remove that picture for whatever that thing next time yes sir okay so children i am continuing to the next uh, screen the wait a second okay they told you this will become a textbook you'll be writing something you'll be doing examples you'll be doing lot many more things actually as you progress in the lessons so complete package so i want you to write sir so the magnitude also will be same of each here Vector. Actually, you are moving the same vector, no? So why will it change? We are moving the same vector parallel to itself. That means you are not changing the direction. You are neither you are changing the length of it. So where you place it, and the in the plane of the paper is not really a problem. This is a pure uh, what you call a mathematical requirement when we show the vector on the pages. Nothing else. There is nothing like say in future. I have got the book here. i am pulling the book this way i am applying the force this way so since i move the vector parallel to itself i'll put the force there and the, still the body will be pulled don't say do you follow my point yes ha uh, the force is then force is acting on it so don't say i'll put the force here because sir told i can move the vectors parallel this force which is not acting and this is uh, some of acting on this don't say this is developing by touch the force which i with which i pull so whether once i said this is there here if i put it on a paper and say force is acting i can put here i can put there doesn't matter that's the main idea not that i'll remove the force from the uh, physical situation don't do that huh okay yes uh, 
Yes, sir. Sir, once again, read the last sentence. Sir, this is very important. It is very important for constructing geometrical, geometrical figures. figures like triangle or parallel. Okay. okay, thanks. Okay. So I'll be going to the next page now. Yeah, Vignesh Ramaswamy, tell me. Sir, in the previous slide, could you please go to the previous slide for a second, sir? Hmm. Sir, here you told that uh, two vectors having same magnitude, but if they if they represent a separate quantity, then they are not equal. Yes. But uh, if both the uh, vectors have a value of zero, sir, will they still be unequal or will they become equal vectors again? Even then, look at this. Zero force cannot be equal to zero velocity, right? Okay, sir. Isn't it so? Yes, huh? sir. Right. Good. Can I continue, uh, Vignesh? Yes, sir. Right. And this one, shall I go to the next page? Yeah, sir. Right. Now, uh, equality of vectors and transport of a vector is over. Hmm? And I told you this parallel transport of vector is important for us when we construct geometrical figures, which I'll be showing anyway in the next heading itself, that is law of parallelogram vectors and law of triangle of vectors, right? Okay, then. Mm. Uh, could you just refer to the uh, synopsis I've given you for the first lesson? What next after that? Negative of vector, I believe. Huh? There's nothing. Of course, remember once again. Yeah, just let me show you this. This is vector A. So every time I'm just trying to make the arrow head bold, I'm not putting vector like this anytime. Because I would like to recognize vectors as unique entities, physical entities. So the moment you show like this, it is like you and me, hmm? this vector A, not just some arrow we keep writing. In other words, they are so important that I told you they are the facts of nature. They are guiding the, they are expressing the nature. They are expressing the laws of nature, right? Now, this vector A, a vector having exactly same magnitude or negative vector, you said, don't write. Negative of vector is also okay. Don't misunderstand anyway. If this is a vector B, this length and this length are same. Okay. Hello. This magnitude, I'll write mod A is equal to mod B. Mod is for magnitude. I told you already. All right. In the notation of a vector, it was told. Then you can write A equals minus B. Or if you give this by direction as positive, B equals minus A. Or you can say B equals minus A. Anything if you don't want this, because I want to tell A is this way positive then B will be negative of A, right? B will be negative of A. Just like that, but we'll see later the purpose of it. And after this, what did I do? What did I give there? Unit vector. It's the most important thing for us. A vector having a unit magnitude. These are also called basis vectors. But for us, this is enough. A vector having a magnitude of one. That is unit magnitude. And a defined a well-defined direction, huh? a specific direction.
Okay. I hope you are also writing along with me. So I'll write here. A unit vector a hat a cap a long vector a is defined as a hat or a cap is equal to vector a by mod a vector a by mod a do you understand the meaning of it so you have already have vector a like this is not responding just a minute so children speak out first of all i said a vector having a magnitude of 1 and a specific direction so in this particular case i am giving a specific direction to this a cap it is the direction of vector a bar hello Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This pen is not available on the internet. I should go somewhere and buy again. So, not finding time. This is troubling. So, can you read one unit vector? A vector having a magnitude of? One. Yeah. One and a specific direction. Yes. Okay. So a unit, a unit vector along a unit vector called a hat along a cap is defined as vector a is vector a by mod a. Hmm? Like this is vector a. Now this can be in this direction I can define. I'll give the direction of a only, but I'll put the magnitude of them as one. These are all the unit vectors. One, 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 like this one. So that, so that this vector A could be written as, sorry. So that this vector A could be written as, tell me. I'll call this as a cap. Huh? Mod a into a cap. Ah, mod a into a cap, which I'm, it's there here. You understand the point? Hello. If mod a is twelve, for example. Yes, sir. Uh, each is a each is a unit vector. This one. Okay. And in the rectangular. In the three-dimensional rectangular coordinate system, Cartesian coordinate system, in the three-dimensional Cartesian coordinate system, you know, how is it? This is one second. X axis, Y axis, Z axis. Hmm? Three unit vectors, continuation. Three unit vectors I cap, A cap, and K cap 
are defined along x, y, and z directions respectively. Okay, that means along x axis, I can think of having many unit vectors like this one magnitude and direction of x. And here I can think of many unit vectors called j cap. Along this, many unit vectors are called k cap. And remember, these unit vectors have no units, they can be used for any any vector. What is, I'll tell you, just write that, the space is filled, I'll go to the next page while talking more of that. Sir, can you read that three unit vectors, I cap, J cap and K cap are defined? Defined. Yeah. Defined along x, y, and z directions respectively. Okay. I am using a laptop with touch, so the pens are not that sensitive. Like yeah, okay, I can understand. Like like this uh, iPad where I write with my iPad, um, Apple pencil. Yes. Uh, the which which I you see my handwriting there that comes so nicely better than on a paper but here this is not so sensitive but on the iPad there are limitations for the camera and the zoom done sir now uh, one minute yeah so this is a cap is vector A by mod A. Do you understand? These units will cancel out. So no units will be there, but one, just magnitude one. Okay. Now, why to do like this? Because a vector here can be expressed as the sum of its component vectors using the unit vectors. So, I'll write my statement here itself. Rub this off. Oh, once again, this is. Hmm. Just add so that you can write continuous children, on this one. Huh? X, Y, Z direction respectively, semicolon, so that are you writing so that a given a given vector a given vector with its tail at the origin with its tail at the origin in this coordinate system in this coordinate system can be written can be written as the sum of its component vectors as the sum of its component vectors using i using these vectors using these unit standard vectors coordinate system standard standard. tell me again see i am yeah. giving you yeah, a, okay. i was going slow yeah, so that a given vector with its tail at the origin in the in, in this, this coordinate. In the coordinate system can be represented as the sum of its component vectors using these unit vectors. I'll show you what it means huh? in the next page. Hope you people have written down that. Yes, sir. I'm continuing to the next page. What it means, I'll show you. First of all, components, anyway, I'll be discussing in more details, but remember, 
the tail of this vector starts here for example this vector is supposedly having its shadows of course for the 3d thing i should do a little more work for this mm. for the 3d thing i should do a little more work okay for a while we'll manage it because this is one component vector that is the shadow this is another shadow on this and there will be another shadow here which i did not show here in 3d i need to show the 3d make some things like that which i'm right now i'm not doing so we call this as shadow along x axis this we call shadow along y axis this we call a shadow along z axis it is in the 3d plane children not in xy plane okay hello so this vector a can be written as sum of three vectors one is see this this vector the unit vector here is what i i told you right this is ax will be so many times i sorry this vector will be so many uh, so many ax times i this vector along x axis and that vector along y axis is ay times j that is az times k so this is the purpose of this i j k unit vectors more of this i'll bring back because i talked about unit vector it is meaningful to talk about that now okay the shadow business the 3d picture i did not show it right now i will be falling behind for the next one so i'll be anyway i'll be talking about components again okay so this is this is the purpose of unit vectors you know a single vector is there here but this is written as the sum of three component vectors component vectors means what this vector is supposed to be having these three parts spread along x y z why like that we'll see so that is the main purpose of unit vectors there look 1 2 3 4 that is enough okay then null vector ah uh, this is pure mathematical requirement children you will talk more about this in mathematics for us is not a big deal null vector is what a vector with zero magnitude and no specific direction we mentioned because we still actually no direction at all actually speaking but we call it a vector therefore we we say no specific direction what it means i'll tell you say there are two forces acting on a body this is f1 this f1 is equal to mod f1 equals 12 newtons there is another force called f2 this f2 is also 12 newtons so mod of it but still these are two different vectors why they are having different directions so the net force if you want to calculate the vector force is simply f1 plus f2 when you do that becomes zero isn't it so f net equals zero if i write like this on the left hand side i've got an arrow mark and a vector right hand side a number you can't make a vector equal to a number so i'll put zero bar like that and call it null vector so it is still zero newtons but no magnitude and no specific direction do you follow what i speak in a similar way somewhere in future you'll get the cross product of two vectors a cross b will be zero vector if angle between a and b is zero this is this this is basically a vector so i can't make it equal to zero which is a number so i'll say a cross b equals zero bar so that's it and nothing more than that okay sir so f2 is a negative vector okay huh? f2 is yeah, negative yeah, of f1 yeah. okay doesn't matter but why it come become zero you can look from only the physics part of it don't yeah. say i should write f1 minus f2 here i should write f1 plus f2 only 
yes, to, to understand. Huh? Yes, Some of these two forces, zero force. Right, that's about null vector. So null vector, unit vector, equality of vectors, and then whatever uh, we talked, unit vector, everything we talked right now, okay? Uh, you can just go through the video once again, once I upload, and you can come back with your questions tomorrow. If you wrote like it down, vector. if you wrote it down, I'll go for the sum of two vectors. We need to start, though we, we won't be able to finish it, Will this will spill into the next lesson also, but that's how it keeps happening. Don't worry. So sum of these forces is zero. Product of these two vectors is zero vector if theta is zero. Okay. So zero force here, somewhere zero velocity, somewhere zero momentum, like that you get. But it's mostly, I told you, a mathematical requirement. Otherwise for us, zero, once you said no force is acting, we see the effect of no force acting than whether it's a vector or uh, the direction, all that we don't bother, no? If the net force is zero, the body will be remaining at rest or moving with a constant velocity is our main idea. All right. All right. So I think it is time for going to the next page. Children. Answer. Right. Now, sum of two vectors. The most important, I told you. Sum of two vectors. First, sum of many vectors later, anyway. The first two are the geometrical methods. or even I can say graphical. One is law of triangular vectors. The other is law of parallelogram of vectors. Okay, and the algebraic method is the cosine rule. What does it mean? In fact, all of them are same. I'll tell you only it's, it's the way you word it. And once again, you should uh, credit Isaac Newton to have given it to us in the beginning. Okay. You can see about some information about this on in his Principia. And this is basically experimental, first of all. This experiment also you will do in the lab even for first year intermediate. Okay, now, this will be taken up first. The statement we make is like this. If two vectors, vector A and vector B can be represented as the two sides of a triangle in a tip to tail direction or sense Hmm? 
then the third side tip to tail means tip of a to tail of b i mean okay tip of a to tail of b so it means the arrow side yeah the point yeah geometrical means that only no huh yes tip to tail direction then in brackets i showed you tip of a to tail of b then the third side from the tail of a to tip of b represents a plus b that you write what it means is i've got two vectors vector a and vector b like that they are there because of their directions physical nature hmm? you can put them in any direction you want i want to find out their sum so i want to find i want to add b to a so i'll keep a like this and move b parallel to itself a little down and a little back like this so i can do that isn't it move it like this and then see that this is a i'm sorry tip of a touches the tail of b you understand this is b was moved like this and brought down a little like this the vectors were like this because that's how they were there in the space that's how maybe two force were acting on a body this may be one block one rope here one rope there you might have tied and were pulling it but you wanted to know how much is the sum how much is their sum so you'll create the situation on the paper put a vector a like this give this direction as the direction of a x direction then move b parallel to itself a little forward and then a little downward right then you see that tail of a touched the sorry tip of a i wrote here tip of a to tail of b tail of b now this side third side from the tail of a to the tip of b is what you call vector a plus vector b you may call it new vector c so that's the meaning of the law of triangle of vectors it is not just triangles they are arrows arrow heads are there they are vectors they are real arrows one length like this one arrow head like that so they are physical entities for us not just some arrow marks you are drawing You, if you're not following the script there tell me i'll tell you Sir, once can you repeat the sentence written in the bracket, sir? Tell me. Ah, uh, can you repeat the sentence uh, which is yeah. written in the bracket? If if where here ah, uh, this yes, is sir. tip tip of A to tail of B. Tip of A to tail of B. Okay, sir. Because I said tip to tail direction, no? so that's where. i wanted to make it clear that's why i took a and b specifically there okay Done. 
So I'm continuing. Five minutes. Yeah. Sir. Yes. Sir, like we can't we make the vector from the tip of B to tail of A, or we should be in the if same. If you want A plus B, you do this. If you want B plus A, do the other way. Huh? Say, okay. I want A plus B. So you need to see that tip of A touches tail of B. If you want B plus A, the reverse. I'll show you that. Huh? Are they both one and the same or different? Sir? They are one and same. Finally. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Okay. That that immediately I'll show it now. But the order you add is going to be important. Yes, right. I will go to the next slide. Look, uh, Vishnu Vardhan was asking something. Say the vectors were like this first. Some vector A, some vector B, somewhere like that. Now I wanted A plus B. What will I do? A I will put like this. B I will put like this. Okay. This is vector A. This is vector B. So this will be our vector A plus B. Yes, sir. You can call it a new vector C if you want. You can give it a new name C. Now I want B plus A. Keep B as it is. B will be like this only. But move A parallel to itself so that Tip of B touches tail of A. Once again, join. This will be B plus A. But remember, if you superimpose this figure on this, you'll know that this and this are same. Isn't it? Yeah, I said if we flip it. Uh, uh, so we can also say from here A plus B equals B plus A. That is. This vector addition follows what commutative means the order of operation should not should not make a difference. Then you say it is following commutation or commutative law. Sir, like then we cannot we should not start the vector from mm. left, head the tip of B. No, your, your voice is breaking, Vishnu. Sir, then we should not start the vector from tip of B, sir. I when I wanted to... B plus A, I started from tip of B, right? When I wanted A plus yeah, B, I started from tip of no, A. No, sir. You have, taken... uh. you have started from tail now, sir. Naturally, when you say, when you want B to A, tip of B should touch tail of A. Then the third side from the tail of B oh. to tip of A. Yeah, we have to start from tail and attach to the tip. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Mm. And in fact... This plus this will be what, children, if you... That becomes law of palogram vectors. Hmm? Anyway, I'll come back to that later. Finish all this. Now we can check it various ways. Like... So many, many cases we can check. This is A. And this is B. I wanted A plus B, for example. What will I do? This is straight. What this is standing, this is sleeping in our school language, right? A bring B down like this. You follow? This is our A plus B. Do you follow? Hello? And yes, this, sir. Is, this is A and this is B. So what will I do to get A plus B? Tell me. A will be as it is. Now what should I do? This is B. Do you follow? This is my A plus B. I told you pilot transport, do you remember? Huh? Hello. I wanted to add A to B. 
a plus b i want to get it only from the figure hmm? so that i did not do anything to be i just brought it down then moved it forward do you follow this is a that is b so this is a plus b hello do you all follow that yes sir yes sir so this will be done again and again and again in solving problems okay yes sir uh, you should know how to get that a plus b vector the new vector right now here itself another thing can be given law of parallelogram of vectors look the statement also i'll give you to begin with if two vectors vector a and vector b can be can be represented in magnitude and direction can be represented means in magnitude and direction you not even add but people expect like that in magnitude and direction as the two adjacent sides of a parallelogram adjacent sides of a parallelogram hmm? then the diagonal passing from the tails of the two hmm? passing from their common point okay like for example if i i'll show you that and uh, write the statement this and this you add what will happen put one over the other i'll tell you what is that thing this is a bar now oh, one b bar we put here but another b bar this b bar i can put here also so with two vectors how do you form a parallelogram one vector will be doubled b should be represented two times a should be represented two times do you follow this plus this will be this only children isn't it hello yes sir so this is a sorry uh, this is this is a that is b so this is b this is a so this is your a plus b so this is called what you call the diagonal diagonal from the tail of a and b to the tips of a and b huh? diagonal from the tails to the tips tips do you follow not the this diagonal that's what you need to understand diagonal from the tails of a and b to their tips represents vector a plus vector b are their sum so this figure
in a way it is even same as the law of triangular vectors you see i told you already to get this figure what can you do put this figure over that this this will be common right this plus this is equal to this so it's for convenience that sometimes we represent it like a parallelogram or sometimes we can represent it like a triangle hello children i want you to draw them and ask a question Come on, children. Tell me, where are you? Are you writing? Yes, sir. If two vectors, vector A and vector B, can be represented in magnitude and direction as the two adjacent sides of parallelogram, then the diagonal from the tails of A and B to their tips represents their sum. A plus B, bar, A bar plus B bar represents their sum. You can write if you want. Their sum. A bar plus B bar. you may give it a new name called r if you want resultant you might say yeah one word we forgot to talk about was resultant anyway it keeps coming again and again okay i could only state i could not derive the cosine rule which will be deriving tomorrow hmm? it takes time but until here are you okay with the whole thing yes Tell sir me. yes sir any yes, question sir. so but i want you to realize that say if i if i want to make a parallelogram here what will i do i'll draw b again like this right and a again like this so this becomes a parallelogram isn't it so yes, last triangular vectors and last parallelogram vectors are not different actually speaking it just for our convenience at that particular point of time i want to draw only three lines or five lines is left to you and in a similar way that cosine rule which which are going to derive is true for this true for that okay so on the on the paper you can do it according to your own convenience for example if there are two vectors like this one is like this the other is like this there's some you wanted for example for whatever physical reason what do you do you might do like this only the law of triangular vectors do you all understand this this is vector a this is vector b this is vector a plus vector b but i don't want to do that what you do you can do vector a like this you can put vector b like this you can put and complete the parallelogram like this do you follow and say this is once again b this is once again a with arrows if you want and then this will be your a plus b so whether you draw this figure this figure really doesn't matter this is a this is b this is b so this is the tails the angle will be there between the tails or the tips anyway this is also b so this is your a plus b all the small things are taken care with a lot of care children tomorrow we'll derive the cosine rule and uh, third lessons applications will include in that okay yes sir yeah uh, so shall we take leave yes sir all right yes, sir. i am ending the show keep the annotation yes and then stop the share and end the session